All right, well, uh, thank you, and uh, let's go to the Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 38. Jeremiah chapter 38, uh, and I'll start reading in verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 38, verse 7. I'd like to speak to you this morning. Uh, you can make a difference. You can make a difference. The Bible, the, the, the Bible, um, the Bible tells us about a man named Abed-Melech. He made a difference. Jeremiah chapter 38, verse 7. If you just follow along, the Bible says, Now when Abed-Melech, the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs which was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon, the king then, sitting in the cave of Beth, Beth, Benjamin, Abed-Melech went forth out of the king's house and spake to the king, saying, My lord, the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet, whom they have cast into the dungeon, and he is like to die for hunger in the place where he is, for there is no more bread in the city. Let's close our eyes and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, today for your word. Thank you that um, you want, want us to still keep rescuing people and help us, Lord, to realize that we can make a difference, make a difference in someone's life, make a, di make a difference in a family. Uh, Lord, help us, Lord, to make a difference. Thank you for um, allowing us to come and worship you and and I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit, your power will uh, come and empower us uh, of, of you and help us, Lord, to, to be reminded how, how good you are, how uh, Jesus died on the cross, and, and how good it is to, to tell others about you. Bless, bless now, Lord, we ask you in Jesus' name, amen. Um, there were four princes that didn't like Jeremiah. His names are Jephthah, Gedaliah, Jukal, and Pashur. They didn't like his preaching. They didn't like his standards. They didn't like his prophetic words that he had to say. In a way, every time he said, Thus saith the Lord, will bring maybe a chill on their backs and and how truthful that is in our days when people around, they don't want to hear God's word and they don't want to hear what really ha what he has for them. He has good news, but, uh, but uh, these four men, these four princes, they didn't like Jeremiah. Uh, but there was one man that did like Jeremiah. His name is Abedmelech. After these four men put Jeremiah in the dungeon, Abedmelech heard what happened. We don't know that how much he knew about Jeremiah, uh, but we know that when he heard that Jeremiah was put in that cistern, in that hole, he wanted to do something about it. Now, if we think about a slave, slaves are not naturally happy. Um, they are normally angry. They normally are people that uh, have bitterness in their lives because where they are. But, Jeremiah, uh, but obed Melech, being in that state, being a slave, being from Ethiopia, now a eunuch serving at the king's palace, at the king's house, he hears that Jeremiah is in great danger. Um, he goes to the king and tells the king what is going on. Now the king knows, but uh, in a way, abed Malak, he sees the, the true what's going with Jeremiah. In verse 9, it says, My lord, the king, 
These men have done, have, have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet, whom they have cast into the dungeon, and he is like to die for hunger in the place where he is, for there is no more bread in the city. Abedmelech comes to the conclusion that, hey, there is no more bread in the city. Uh, and this is the reality. For Obedmelech, that was the reality. The reality is, Jeremiah is in the dungeon, there is no more bread in the city, and he is going to die. In a way, he, God opened his eyes. In a way, I believe God was telling Abedmelech, hey, you are the one that needs to rescue Jeremiah, who is going to keep preaching God's word, who is going to tell the people, thus saith the Lord. There's, there needs to be someone that goes and rescues Jeremiah. Bedmelech, I want you to be the one. But the devil is very good to tell us that we cannot make a difference. Uh, he is very good at saying, hey, look at your past. Look what you've done. Look at your life. Remember all those uh, uh, sins that you've committed. Remember your life, and there is no way God can use you. We need to re be reminded that His Word, uh, like the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, His Word will change not only our, our, our souls, but our, uh, our, 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 the way that we are to serve God. God can change us. And Jeremiah was in that place, in that dungeon, and Abedmelech had to make a difference. He had to make a difference. But first, in verse 7, it says, Now when Abedmelech heard, he heard. Um, many times we just don't want to hear. What do you do when you hear that someone has a need? What do you do when you hear that someone needs help? Abedmelech heard. Um, we are serving in Puebla. And there's a lot of people that need help. There's a lot of people that are, that are maybe not with their hands up like the Macedonian men. But there are a lot of people that need help. Many of them, they think that they are on their way to heaven. But it's through their religion that they think so. Uh, it's through their good works that they think so, that they'll go to heaven. But there is a lot of people around, not only in Puebla, not only in Mexico, but also here in Sacramento. And Abedmelech... He heard, and he had to do something about it. It says that he heard in verse 7, Now when Abedmelech the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs which was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon. Uh, verse 9, Abedmelech went forth. He went forth. God is looking for Christians that not only will here, but it'll be a good start to pray and say, God, help me here. God, help me see the need. What is there for me to do? There is always that we can do as Christians. Uh, Abedmelech, he was not the same uh, from the same uh, uh, people. He was from Ethiopia. He could have said, no, I am not, I cannot relate to Jeremiah because we are different. He could have said, but I am a nobody. I am not a prince. I am not someone important. Uh, I don't have a career. I am not a doctor. I am not an architect. 
There is no way I can make a difference in Jeremiah's life. Um, we don't have to have a title to be able to help someone. Amen? We don't have to have uh, a title or a career or money to be able to help someone. The truth is that many times, because we have that, because we have a place to work or we have a uh, title, uh, and because we are busy, sometimes we think we're doing something for God. And God comes and says, hey, I want you to do something. And we'll tend to be like, Lord, don't you see I am busy? I am busy doing all these things. I can help Jeremiah. I am busy with my work. I am busy with my title. I am busy being a, uh, a prince. I can help. But Abed-Melech didn't have all those things. Uh, so he was able to go. Abed-Melech went forth out of the king's house and spake to the king. In those days, it was not very easy to speak to a king. Uh, many times they were put to death if they dare to speak to a king. We're reminded of Esther, how she had to pray and ask he, her people to pray for her and to fast because he was, she was going to see her king, which was also her husband. Imagine if our wives had to fast in order for us, for them to talk to us. Amen? No. You didn't ask permission? You can't talk to me today. Um, but what a privilege that we can speak to our king. That we can go to him at any time. That he is willing to hear us. That, he, that we don't have to make an appointment to talk to the Lord. We can just go and ask. We can just go and talk to Him. And He is waiting. Amazingly, He is waiting for us. Doesn't matter what, uh, what we ask. Now we need to make sure that it's according to His will. But um, many times we, probably this has happened to you that You would ask for something small. Maybe I, I'm reminded of a time that I was uh, at OBC, Oklahoma Baptist College, mowing the grass and the sun and really, really hot. And me saying, Lord, I sure would love a Coke. Amen? Heaven's drink, by the way. And... A few minutes later, someone walking to me and giving me a Coke, saying, Hey, brother, I just thought about you, and it's hot today. I got you this Coke. Uh, or it can be something bigger, something great and amazing that we could ask to the Lord. And it doesn't matter if it is something small or something big. Our God is powerful. Our God can supply all of our needs. And Abed-Melech, he thought, okay, I need to go to speak to the king. So we come to verse 9 where it says, My Lord, the king. I love how the Bible says, My Lord, the king. Because his king, that king, Zedekiah, was his king. I don't think he was mad at him anymore. There were actually some slaves that would love their king or their masters because their masters loved their slaves. And I think this Abedmelech, uh, his king was, the king was his king. That, that's why he says, my Lord, the king. I would like to ask you something. Is God, your God, is Our Heavenly Father, your Father. Matthew chapter 6, the Bible says that when we pray, we could pray our Heavenly Father. And He should be our Heavenly Father. He is 
our king. And we can go to him at any time with any request saying, my father, my Lord, my king. So Abed-Melech, he goes to his king. He didn't go directly to Jeremiah thinking, I can help Jeremiah by myself. Let's see what I can do. I'll, I'm going to go and maybe in his mind throw a rope and, and try to help Jeremiah. Some say Jeremiah liked to eat lots of tacos and he was a little overweight. Um, but he also, Abed-Melech, he could have gone to his king back in Ethiopia um, because he was actually his previous king. But the thing is that he went to the right king. He, wa he went to his king, and his king was there uh, ready to hear Abed-Melech. And when he was talking, he shared his heart. And he said, my Lord, the king, these men have done evil. Jeremiah is going to die. And this is the reality. The reality is in our time that 56 million people died every year. Reality is that 4.7 million died every month. As we just heard, um, thousands die before they are born, and now more thousands are going to die not even a week after they are born. We live in a cruel wor world. Reality is that the devil doesn't want us to preach and proclaim the gospel. By the year 1800, we were one billion people. That is the reality. By 1930, we reached two billion people. Maybe there is someone here from the 1930s. I don't know. But by 1974, the year that I was born, we finally reached four billion people, twice as much than in 1930, which means... It took about 44 years to double from 2 billion to 4 billion. This year, 2022, um, will be 8 billion people. And we don't have more churches. That is the reality. Churches across the country are closing. Some say three, four, five thousand churches, and that was before COVID. We need to do more. We need to pray more. We need to preach more. We need to proclaim more. But the reality is that there is a lot of people in this world, and we need to do something about it. I used to think, and at a, some point, I think it was real, that Mexico City was the largest city in the world. But now going back to the internet and to statistics, we find out that actually Tokyo has 38 million people. Uh, Jakarta, 32 million people. New Delhi, 25 million people. Manila, 24. Seoul, 23. Shanghai, 23. Karachi, 22. Beijing, 21. New York City, 20. And Guangzhou, 20. Mexico City is not there in the top 10 list. But still, reality is that Mexico City needs the Lord as much as Tokyo needs the Lord. Reality is that we need to, to do more and make a difference. So Abed-Melech said, 
I need to make a difference. And he goes to the king and talks to the king. And uh, maybe there was someone trying to discourage him, saying, hey, why? What are you doing? Jeremiah, uh, Bed-Melech on his way to talk to the king and, and someone maybe... I, I could imagine uh, telling his friends, hey, I'm going to go and talk to the king. Tell him that we need to rescue Jeremiah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to the king. And, and, and no, don't, wor- don't, don't waste your time. What are you doing, Abed-Melech? But there was something inside him saying, I need to make a difference. Reminds me of... Uh, how God has used many a time in the Bible, people by themselves trying to make a difference. How uh, in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 14, there was a young man that he decided to make a difference, and his name is Jonathan, and he talked to his Uh, his uh, armor saying, hey, let us go over to the Philistines and let's kill them all. And his armor, instead of saying, truthfully, you are crazy, he said, let's do it. And God blessed Jonathan because he wanted to make a difference. Abed-Melech is, he went to the king and he Talk to the king. And this is what the king said, going back to Jeremiah chapter 38, verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 38, verse 10. The king uh, commanded Abed-Melech. It's an interesting that we have a commandment. We have the great commission. And, Jer- and uh, 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 the king commanded Abed-Melech, the Ethiopian, saying... Take from hence 30 men with thee. You, Abedmelech, are going to be the one that is going to go and rescue Jeremiah. And he put under his power, he gave him, the king gave Abedmelech 30 men. And he said, take this. 30 men. I am empowering you with 30 men. I'm giving you 30 men. These 30 men are going to go with you. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says that God has given us of His Holy Spirit to, and the power of His Holy Spirit to go and witness and to all the world. And Abedmelech now being empowered, being sent from the, from the king, by the king, now he is walking out of that palace, of that place, uh, not wondering what's going to happen anymore, if he is going to die, if the, Lord, if the king is going to hear him or not, or if, the, uh, or if the king is even going to do anything about it, No, now he is walking towards Jeremiah confident. Confident that these 30 men are going to help him to do, to be able to rescue Jeremiah. What this world needs is more people that are willing to do more for the Lord. Thinking I can make a difference. How many people out there, not even Christians, that want to make a difference in this world? We know some of them, even personally, that have raised money and even have uh, requested some from us, and I don't know how much we've given, but not a lot, uh, and asking for money to establish schools in Africa, thinking if this world, if this world uh, is going to be different, it's going to be through 
education, and we need to put more schools in Africa. Some will take even water and invent some kinds of means to provide water in South America, in, uh, in uh, I believe it is in some areas in Peru where it doesn't rain, a ways to bring water to them. Someone will, will be like, I need to make a difference in the lives of kids. And we hear all these stories every day with someone having a burden to make a difference in this world. But you and me have the greatest gift of all, salvation. Amen. And it's through salvation that we can really make a difference. Make a difference. Um, Maybe some of you know the, at least pastor probably remembers a little bit about my wife's testimony, how she got saved and how was where she used to be, the place she used to be. And someone in her high school went, a 25-year-old man, uh, preaching and proclaiming and, in a way, doing a, a, a survey. What is love? And her friend, Nicole's friend, uh, Desiree, I believe he was, said, hey, look at that crazy man that is preaching something and is teaching something weird. And she went to him and she heard and, and he said, hey, do you know what true love is? And... Uh, and God started through that work in her heart. And a few months later, she got saved. And God turned her life around totally, completely. And maybe for, for, for many of you, how God, a wonderful and loving God, what He's done for you and me. That same God is the God that still is working still is working for us to go and tell. So abed Melech said, I can make a difference. I can make a difference. Verse 12. And abed, -Mel and abed Melech, the Ethiopian, said unto Jeremiah, Put now these old cast clouds and rotten rags under thine armholes, under the course. And Jeremiah did so. So they drew Jeremiah with cords and took him up out of the dungeon. And Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. So Abedmelech finally went. With all the 30 men, it was not one, but 30 that rescued Jeremiah. You know, it's easier when we help someone and it's 30 of us. I'm reminded when Paul was taken down the wall of, I believe, uh, Jerusalem, and, and he was taken down and and, and uh, it wasn't one, but we're many. And God is a wonderful God. And God is, yes, He gives us of the power of His Holy Spirit to rescue people. But, a wonderful, what, but what a wonderful thing is when we as a church can go and rescue people. When we as a church, we can uh, help even missionaries to go and reach people. Jeremiah, he got Reach and he got saved and out of that place. And now Jeremiah kept on going, preaching to the thousands. Truth of the matter is that we'll never know uh, where are the ones that we have led to the Lord. Uh, it'll be a wonderful thing if one day someone tells me, hey, Brother Munoz, you led me to the Lord 10 years ago, and now I'm pastoring a church that has 25,000 people, and I just want to thank you. Amen? That would be wonderful. 
But uh, you never know. We'll never know. And it's a blessing. A bad Melech rescued Jeremiah. Jeremiah went on preaching the, the gospel, God's word, to the thousands. But what would happen if a bad Melech said, ah, it's too late. Uh, I'm too tired. Uh, maybe my neighbor, he needs to go. Uh, someone else. No, he said, I'm going to do it. I am going to make a difference. May the Lord help us to make a difference in this, in this world. Let's close our eyes and let's, let's pray.